we pitch it to them. Otherwise known as make PowerPoints not suck again. <laughs> So five things. Number one, you set the tone. So before you start, just dictate the tone of the room. Sometimes our clients are nervous. <laughs> um, maybe an icy stare from a judge is making you nervous. I've been there. So tell a joke, lighten the, root, the, the mood, and just set them at ease that everything is going to be all right, and maybe yourself as well. In our case, Fill your presentation with bad puns, which is a good way to set people at ease. <laughs> Number two, make your presentation look legit. So create a template that looks nice and has a lot of white space. Um, find a nice font. Don't default to Times New Roman. Um, if your font's budget is zero dollars, um, Google Fonts has a lot of free, beautiful options. Uh, maybe go so far as to create a team logo. Um, use high-res photography as much as possible and mock up your solution in the real world. More on that in a minute. So number three, say it, don't display it. So keep slides to about 10 words. If your audience is reading the screen, they aren't listening to you. So instead, make it visual. Um, you've worked hard, you've poured your heart and soul into this, and you're the expert. You are the main event. Um, the presentation is supplementary. So instead, show and tell how your innovation works. And show what does the world look like on the other side. Quite literally, show the utopia on the other side of your solve. This is where some light photoshopping skills come in handy. So in the case of a campaign or a logo design, we always show the work in context. Um, our work will never exist in a vacuum, and so we never show it that way. Um, so for ZipChef, we dreamed of all the touch points where their audience would interact with the brand, such as packaging. So a brand is more than a logo, and so we selected a type palette for them that had um, fonts that had a little bit of a nostalgic, kitcheny feel that reflected the handcrafted nature of their meals. And the colors are attention grabbing, which is really important when you're getting a new brand out into the market to build brand equity. Um, the colors are also food inspired by lemons and leafy greens, which reflects the healthy nature of their meals. And we also designed them a checker pattern, which is a combination of vintage restaurant tablecloths and checkerboard kitchen floors and racing flags to um, reflect the quick delivery nature of their business. So we showed them different types of labels that they would use, delivery bags. We showed them t-shirts aprons and chef's jackets, a refrigerator magnet, a weekly menu, social media, and email templates. So everything that we knew that they would need for a successful brand rollout. Number four, first it. So this is where being a team really comes in handy. Um, you can play off of each other's energy. If you forget to mention something, your teammate will remember. So divide the content and conquer, chiming in on your area of expertise. Number five, surprise and delight. Be 100% extra. <laughs> Give your audience more than they expect. So how far can your innovation go? What would the world look like in 12 months, two years, even 10 years because you made an impact? That's a world the judges want to see, and I want to see it too. So in Zip Chef's case, maybe a beautiful branded pop-up at the farmer's market. Maybe franchise locations across Georgia. And someday maybe a delivery fleet. We like to dream alongside of our clients, imagining outcomes perhaps they hadn't even thought of themselves. Bonus round. 
So I call this segment Bring Props. Um, sometimes before a pitch, we'll create a tangible expression of the brand. Um, so for Vera Stewart's catering company, we created a monogram that we had stitched on real fabric to show her during the pitch. So having something abstract become real in your hands makes it harder to say no and makes the idea seem like it's already real. If it's not too heavy a lift, um, mugs and print collateral are really easy to make at a fairly low cost, although maybe not that mug. <laughs> So one of my favorite quotes that I think about all the time is this saying from um, famous designer Milton Glaser who designed the I Love New York logo. There are three responses to a piece of design. Yes, no, and wow. Wow is the one to aim for. And this is the goal that we aim for at Wear Stewart, no matter what we're designing. And any, pre any presentation that we give or that you give is also, in a sense, a piece of design, and it's capable of wowing. So to recap, how you can wow your audience during this Innovate competition. Set the tone. Make your prezzo legit. Show the work in context. Rehearse. And be 100% extra. And this combined power will absolutely melt the judges' minds and hopefully their faces. So wowing an audience is ultimately about empathy and taking on their problems as our own. Because if we really understand our audience, we'll understand their problems too. It's about a beautiful solve and giving people more than they asked for. And a little bit about authentic showmanship. So in summary, have you identified your sphere of excellence where your passions and talents meet? Once you have, team up with others that have done the same. This competition is the perfect time and place to do that, but let that extend beyond and into your career as well. Keep trying new things and see what sticks. Because you never know what magic will result when two or more weird and smart minds come together.